from the Wigwam in Phoenix, Arizona. It's the Cube covering Data Platforms 2017. Brought to you by Cubeball. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are in uh, the Wigwam Resort, historic Wigwam Resort, just outside of Phoenix, Arizona at Data Platforms 2017. It's a new big data event. You might say, God, there's already a lot of big data events, but Quobel's taking a different approach to big data. Cloud first, cloud native. They're integrated with all the big public clouds and they all come from big data backgrounds, practitioner backgrounds. So it's a really cool thing and we're really excited to have our next guest, Colin Riddle. He's a big data architect from Epic Games. He was up on a panel earlier today. Colin, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, so enjoyed your, your panel. A um, lot of topics that you guys covered. One of the ones we hear t over and over again is get early wins. You know, how do you drive adoption, change people's behavior? It's not really a technology story, it's a human factors and behavior story. So I wonder if you can share some of your experience, some best practices, some, some stories. So I don't know if there's really a rule book on best practices for that. I mean, every, every um, environment is different, every company is different. Um, but one thing that seems to be constant is um, resistance to change in a lot of places. <laughs> so um, That is consistent. <laughs> so, um, you know, we had um, some challenges when I came in. Um, we were running a, a system that was um, on its last legs, basically, and we had to replace it. There was really no choice. There was no fixing it. Um, and so I did actually encounter a fair bit of resistance um, with regards to that when, when we, um, from when I started at Epic, so. Now it's interesting, you said a fair amount of resistance. Another one of your lessons was, you know, start slow, find some early wins, mm -hmm. but, but you said, but you were thrown into a big project right off the bat. So, so we were, yeah, I'm curious, we were. how did the big project go? Um, but when you do start slow, I mean, how, how small does it need to be where you can start to get these wins to break down the resistance? I, so I think what, what we, I mean, the way we approached it was we, we looked at what was the most crucial process or the most crucial set of processes and that's where we started. So that was um, um, what we tried to convert first, and and then um, you know make that data available to people via an alternative method, um, which was a Hive. Um, and, and you know once people started using it and and um, learned how to interact with it properly, you, you know the, the the barriers start to uh, start to fall. Um, what, what were um, some of the difficult change management issues? Where where did you come from in terms of the you know technology platform and sort of what what resistance did you hit? So um, it was really um, a user interface was was the main um, factor of resistance. Um, so we were running a Hadoop cluster. Um, it was fixed size, it wasn't on prem, but it was in a private cloud, um, and. Um, it was basically simply being overloaded. Um, and so um, we had to do constant maintenance on it. We had to prop it up. Um, and it was the performance was degrading and degrading and degrading. Um, so um, the, the idea um, behind the replacement was um, really to uh, give us something that was, was um, scalable, that would grow in the future, that wouldn't run into these performance um, blockers that we were having. Um, but again, like I said, the hardest factor was the user interface differences. So people were used to the tool set that they were working with. And they what, liked the way it worked. What was that tool set? Um, I would rather not actually say that on camera, that's if that's fine. okay. <laughs> <laughs> does, it, is it, does it source itself in Redmond or something? Uh, no, no it does not, no, they're not oh. from Redmond. But um, I just, I don't want to, uh, okay. I don't want to cast no, aspersions on. you don't need to cast aspersions, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the, the conflict was really just around familiarity with the tool. It wasn't really about a wholesale change of behavior and becoming more data centric. No, um, no, because the, the the tool that we replaced was an effort to become more data centric to okay. begin with. Um, okay. So there definitely was um, a corporate culture of we want to be more um, data informed, um, and so so that was not one of the factors that we had to overcome. It was okay. really it was really tool based. But the the games market is so competitive, right? You mm -hmm. guys have to be on your game all the time, and you got to keep an eye on what everybody else is doing in their games, um, and make course corrections. Uh, as I understand, something becomes hot or new, or you know. So you guys have to be super nimble on your feet. How mm -hmm. does taking this approach help you be more nimble in the way that you guys get new code out, new functionality? Um, so it's really, really very easy for us now to. Um, 
uh, inject new events into the game and to, um, we basically can, can break those events out and, and report on them um, or analyze what's going on in the game for free with the, the, uh, the architecture that we have now. Does that mean it's the equivalent of, in IT operations, you know, we in instrument everything from the applications to the middleware down to the hardware. Mm -hmm. Are you essentially doing the same to the game and so you can follow the pathway of a gamer or the hotspots of all the gamers, that sort of thing? Um, I'm not sure I fully understand your question. Um, like, when you're, when you're running analytics mm -hmm. on a you know, massively multiplayer game, mm -hmm. what, what questions are you seeking to answer? So really, what we are seeking to answer at the moment is, is what brings people back? Um, what behaviors can we foster in our players? Yeah, engagement, exactly. And that's how you measure engagement, it's just as simple as do they come back or time on that's, game? That's the, the most simple measure that we okay. use for it, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, so Colin, short on time, I want to give you the last word. When you come to a conference like this, um, there's a lot of peer mm -hmm. uh, interaction. There were mm -hmm. some great questions coming out of the panel around specifically, you know, how do you measure success? It wasn't technical at all. It's, you know, what are the right. things that you're using to measure whether this stuff is, is working? I wonder if you can talk to kind of the power of being in an, an ecosystem of peers here, sure. and any surprises or great insights that you've got? I know I've only been here for a couple days. Um, so I would say that one of the biggest values, obviously I mean the sessions and the breakouts are great, but I think one of the greatest values here is simply the networking aspect of it. So the being able to speak to people who are facing similar challenges or doing similar things, even although um, they're in a completely different domain, um, the problems are, are, are constant, right? So, um, or, or common at least. Um, so, um, you know, how do you um, do machine learning to categorize um, player behaviors in our case, in other cases it's categorization of um, feedback that people get from websites, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it, I, I really think that the networking aspect is the most valuable thing to come All right, like awesome. That. Well, Colin Riddle, Epic Games, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes to stop sure. by theCUBE. You're welcome, we're welcome, thank you very much. Absolutely, all right, George Gilbert, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from Data Platforms 2017 at the historic Wigwam Resort. Thanks for watching.